hello everybody welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here if you're watching this video you're probably looking for a way to resell used clothing or just used items online using a platform like ebay poshmark uh, Mercury, Facebook Marketplace, all the above. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I resell used clothes from start to finish on Facebook Marketplace. Although a lot of these tips will apply to all the other platforms as well. So this video is going to be packed with a lot of information. It's probably going to be pretty long. So I'm going to put chapters in the video as well as timestamps in the description box, just so you can jump around if you need to. Well, I pretty much exclusively sell used clothing on Facebook Marketplace. And that started about six months ago when I was looking for a way to make money from home. I am a full-time unpaid caregiver at home, so I really needed a way to get some extra income in without having to leave the house for hours at a time like a traditional job would make me. So just a quick little disclaimer here, I am in no means a professional. I'm pretty much just showing you what works for me. I'm also not trying to sell you some idea that I do this full time or that I make some crazy amount of money from this, but this is what I do really just for some extra side money uh, for Starbucks, getting my nails done or just saving money in general. Uh, for me, I don't live off of this money, but you can absolutely scale up. That's something that people do all the time. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. One thing that I love about Facebook Marketplace is that no matter what you sell, there's pretty much always a place for you. I have seen everything from clothes, furniture, I've seen like plant seeds, I've seen homemade items, I've seen so many different types of things on Facebook Marketplace. So if it's in good condition and there's a demand for it, it pretty much will always be sold. I get all of my inventory from my local Goodwills and my local Goodwill bins, uh, but other ideas are also estate sales and garage sales. One thing that I really like about shopping at Goodwill or Savers or similar stores is that normally every week they have a tag color that is 50% off. So if you're really Really trying to maximize your profits that is going to be the way to go i have a couple guidelines that i stick to if you are sourcing items to resell my biggest two tips for people that are starting out are keep your items light and keep your items non-fragile at least in the beginning this way you can make sure that your shipping cost is kept at a minimum and then don't really have to worry about your items getting broken or damaged in shipping if you focus on clothing keep your eye out for specific brands or people or bands even, or really recognizable designs. I'm always looking for things that I think people would be specifically looking for. And it's much less likely that someone would wanna buy just a plain colored t-shirt rather than something with a design of their favorite band. So another thing is that people also really love items that look cute. So there's actually been a number of t-shirts that I have sold that for me weren't really particularly important or like a special brand or uh, anything super recognizable but the shirt was really cute and it sold because of that generally i try and look for things that are also either really cute or really trendy you know and of course everybody has their own ideas of what is cute and trendy but for me my general guideline is that if i pick it up and i'm like oh that's cute that's like a cute shirt then i'll take it home to resell So now that you have your items, you're going to want to somehow take a note of what you bought. So I have a spreadsheet that I use. I will like put a little clip of it right here. Um, basically when I buy items, I first thing is that I do is that I put on the first column, I just do a very quick description of the item. If it's like a Disney crop top, I'll say a uh, purple Disney tie-dye crop top. That's the one that I had and as well as how much I purchased it for. So when that item later sells, I'll go in and put how much it sold for and then how much I made and then my spreadsheet will automatically calculate the profit for that item. I like to do this just so I can keep track of how much I'm spending and how much I'm making. Um, it's also really good for taxes at the end of the year, uh, especially if you get audited, you really want to see um, the exact items that you were buying and selling and how much you bought and how much you sold it for and information like that. Uh, editing Jessica here, um, I just wanted to throw this screenshot up on the screen to show everybody that if you have a Goodwill bins in your area, um, that is definitely a really great place to go. Uh, as you can see in the first kind of box there, the first like 
um, shopping trip that I took, I spent $7, and even though only half the items have sold so far, I've already profited almost $70. And same goes for the second trip, I spent almost $14, and only half the items have sold so far, and I've profited almost $90. So... Uh, that's a really good advantage of this spreadsheet is that I can see like, hey, these Goodwill bin stores are really good for just making straight profit. Something else that I really like about the spreadsheet is that you can go and input pretty much any information that you like, like sizes, colors, uh, styles of things that you're buying, uh, just so you could always go back and say, hey, this particular size or this particular style always sold really quickly and this particular style never sells. So it'd be easier for you to get a better understanding of what is selling and what is not selling. So it's also here at this stage that I will also do a double check for any sort of stains or holes that are on the shirt that I might have missed in store. Uh, if it's bad enough, I will keep the tag on and potentially return it to get something else. Uh, but if it's a very minor stain, I'll pretty much just take the tag off and make sure that I wash it. My local Goodwill does have a seven day return policy. So if I find anything wrong with the shirt, like a major stain or a major hole or something that I don't think it would sell uh, very well with, um, then I will go ahead and just return it to get something else. You know, sometimes items that I bought that I'm kind of questioning will sell or not, um, I will leave the tag on, just make sure to like hide it in the photos a little bit, uh, just so, you know, I can give it a couple days, see if it sells, and then if I'm really questioning it, I can just delete the listing and take it back. It's also at this point that you can decide whether or not you want to wash the items. Obviously, at this, you would have to take all of the tags off to do that, and I think washing the items that you sell is also a pretty controversial point in the reseller world, um, especially with things like clothing. Personally, I do not wash the clothing that I resell uh, for two reasons. Number one, when most people are donating clothing to Goodwill, a lot of it comes from clean closets. Most of those clothes in your closet are clean that you're donating. I think it's very rare that someone would pull dirty clothes out of their hamper and then donate. Yes, it's possible. But, and then also the fact that a lot of people do wash clothing when they buy them online. If you're buying used clothing, most people are going to wash it when you receive it before you actually wear it. So for those reasons, I don't really wash the clothing. Um, there are some exceptions to that. Like if I find a shirt, if I buy a shirt and it ends up having just a very small stain or something very minor on it, I will either spot wash it or just throw it in the wash with the regular clothes or if the shirt's just like really wrinkly, but otherwise I won't wash it. Okay, so now it is time to take photos of your items. So this is such an important step, if not the most important step, especially when you're trying to resell clothing online. And so for this, I have three tips. Number one is make it clean. You wanna make sure that the background for your photos are clean and there's no clutter in the background, preferably just a plain background if possible. I actually hang everything on the other side of my door. I'll like insert a video of me taking photos. Um, I just try and think that's like the easiest way, just hang it up, um, take a photo. I know for me personally, I wouldn't buy something online if you can see all their clutter and all their stuff in the background. So a nice plain and clean background works best. Number two is make it bright. You wanna make sure that the lighting is good. Uh, that's for two reasons. Number one, you wanna be able to represent the colors accurately. So using like window lights, or a natural light works best. You really wanna avoid some of those like really yellow tungsten lights. And with that, you wanna avoid low lights, you wanna avoid harsh shadows. Just make sure it looks nice and bright and clean and you can really represent the thing that you're selling well. So number three is document everything. So specifically for shirts, um, I take at least three photos, if not five. The first photo will always be of the front of the shirt. The second one is I take a photo of the tag with the size included. Third one is the back. And then if there's anything special about the shirt, like let's say it has bell sleeves or like an embroidered side, I'll take a photo of that. Um, and then the last thing is that I always take a photo if there's any flaws inside. So if there's any like small stains or holes or like a plucked thing that I think it's very minor, even if it's extremely minor, you have to document it. So the reason I like to take a photo of the tag is for two reasons. Number one, so people can see the brand of the item. And number two is for the size. So even if I write the size in the description, I could even put the size in the title. People will still message me asking me what the size of the item is. So I always just include a picture of the tag to be thorough. 
So now it's time to actually make the listing. So this process can be different depending on what platform you're using and the kind of things that you're selling. So the biggest thing is that you want to make sure that you have a descriptive title. So I'll put a picture of a shirt here that I sold. Um, and the biggest thing is that you really want to avoid vague titles. So for this picture, you wouldn't title it woman's shirt. You know, you wouldn't say um, woman's blouse. You would say uh, woman's blue halter blouse. You could even put the size in there. So women's medium blue floral halter blouse. Uh, the way that I think about it is that if you've ever been on like Shein or some of those like uh, fast fashion websites, sometimes the titles for their items are like a hundred different descriptive words. Uh, that's kind of what I think about when I title my items. Uh, basically anything that could describe the item accurately is going in the title. Basically, just like use all the objectives to describe it. That's how I think of it. Then you're gonna to wanna to add your photos and fill in any other information that your platform may want from you. Um, I know Facebook does have a lot of different options for filling stuff out. I personally fill out the ones that are required, but I do avoid some of them. Um, I think it's actually a glitch on Facebook Marketplace that when you fill out some of those fields and then you save it, if you ever go back and edit anything about the listing, you always have to refill in all of those fields. So even if you just change the price by a dollar, you will have to go back and fill in all those fields. Uh, for me, that gets very annoying. So if it's not required, I pretty much just put all of that information in the description. When it comes to pricing, the biggest thing that like motivates me or helps give me a clue of what I should price an item is what the item originally sells for and what condition it's in. Normally what I do is if I have a particular shirt, I will try and actually Google that shirt to find out where it was sold and how much it was sold for. Also, sometimes I'll check things like eBay or Mercari to see if I can find any comparable listings. Generally, the shirts that I sell, I normally sell them from anywhere from 10 to $20. Um, it's not much, but considering that I get all the shirts for $1.99, maybe $2.99, um, $10 to $20 is a good range for me. If you are selling items that are really good brands or more vintage clothing, obviously that price will go up. So in the description, you need to be as detailed as possible. I generally use this format right here. I'm going to read off of here. So I say basic item description. I will say that the item is used, which is important because it came from a secondhand store. Uh, I'll say used, but in whatever condition, good, excellent, great, practically new condition, something like that. Um, I'll then follow up saying that there's no stains or tears, if that is true, and then I will put the size. So size, men's large, size, ladies, medium, something like that. In the next paragraph, I'll also put if there's any flaws. So I'll put it like a couple asterisks. I'll say, hey, there is a tiny pulled thread on the back, blah, blah, blah. Uh, please see the last photo, which is important that we document everything so they can reference the photo. And then at the very end, I will state that it came from a non-smoking home because normally things spend about like a week or so in my house. Um, and I also make sure that I don't buy anything that smells very heavily of smoke. Um, that's something that you wanna avoid. <laughs> Um, and that the item is ready to ship. So I always include that an item is ready to ship specifically because I always get people asking me if I can meet up in whatever state they're in. So for Facebook Marketplace, I think that because it is a newer platform, there's a lot of people out there that really don't understand that Facebook Marketplace can function just as eBay does, just as Mercari does. Um, so you still get a lot of people that are confused about the whole buying and shipping process of Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, so that's what I do. I just kind of add that in uh, just to help uh, people know that I can ship this item. So if you're new to Marketplace and new to shipping on Marketplace, it might ask you some of your own personal questions just to help set up your shipping account. Um, but it's really easy, it's safe, just answer the questions. And then you also add the weight for the item. This is the biggest reason why I like to ship clothing is that the, at least in Texas, the cheapest option through USPS, I think is 375 if it's under half a pound. Most shirts are under half a pound. So unless it's like a really heavy shirt, I click half a pound. And then you can also enable offer. Let's say I'm listing a shirt for, let's say $15. Uh, sometimes I will allow offers for $12, 12 or 13, $14. And that's something that you can decide to do or not. I usually hide the posts from my friends uh, just because I don't want all of my friends getting a notification that I posted something to Marketplace. Um, if you don't care about that, that's fine. And so for my items, for the clothing items, I do shipping only. So I really try to avoid doing a uh, local pickup with things like clothes just because you know, when people are trying to buy clothes in person, they want to look at it. It's the whole thing of, well, can I try it on? Can I, 
you know, what if it doesn't fit me right? You know, you don't get as much of a hassle when you're just shipping stuff out. So I personally just do shipping on my items. Something also to keep in mind is that when you are taking photos and listing the items, really try to uh, take note of if an item may run large or run small. I will like insert like a video here, but I bought something today. One of them was marked, I think as a double XL and one of them was marked as a medium and the double XL was literally half the size of the medium. So it's really important to either make a note that something runs large or runs small um, and actually give measurements if needed. All right, so now that your item is live, you pretty much just wait for it to sell. You know, Marketplace is kind of tricky with that. You know, I've had things that will sell in like five minutes and I've also had things, the thing, something that I sold today has been listed for two months. So it's kind of like really all over the place. But yes, so it's really kind of a, a toss up whether something will sell pretty much immediately or you'll be waiting a while. Um, you can't do things like promotions on your listings. Um, I don't really, I'm not paying for it to be promoted, uh, but you can also, you know, always decrease the price if you're noticing that your listings are getting a lot of views and saves, but nobody's actually buying it. Sometimes I'll decrease the price or sometimes I'll allow offers for like a couple dollars less than I would want to see if somebody maybe offers something. Um, but generally I'll just leave it and renew it if I need to and just let it be out there to see if somebody buys it. Now it's time to talk about what happens after you make a sale. Obviously the sale process uh, does change and does depend on what platform you're using. But generally when I make a sale, I will pretty much immediately go in and just send a little note to the buyer just saying, uh, thanks for your purchase. I will get this shipped out today, tomorrow, ASAP, something like that. Uh, just to let the buyer know that you have acknowledged their purchase. Now it only takes five seconds and I think that buyers really appreciate that acknowledgement. How you ship your items really depends on what you're shipping. Um, I've said this before, I pretty much only sell clothing, so I ship everything in a poly mailer through USPS. I also use a thermal printer to print out my labels. Uh, that's kind of like a larger upfront cost. It's definitely not something that you need immediately, uh, but in the long run, if you're thinking about making this more of like a, a bigger operation, uh, that's probably something you want to invest in because it will save you a lot of time and a lot of money on ink and paper. And also something that you'll see me doing here in this clip is including a little business card. So at the very beginning, I actually uh, wrote handwritten notes to everybody that purchased something. Uh, but after a while, you know, I would start getting like six, seven orders, uh, like at a time. So it became a little bit much. Okay, we have a friend that has joined us. Uh, but I ended up going to I think it was Snapfish and creating like a very like small, like personalized thank you note. I think it just said, uh, thanks for your purchase. I really appreciate your support of my small business. Uh, your reviews matter to me a lot, something like that, uh, just to help build trust with your customers and possibly build a repeat customer base. Even if those customers go and just leave a positive review on your Facebook seller page, uh, I think they're well worth it. And I think if you go into Snapfish, they always have like different coupons and they always have different like promotions going on. I think I spent less than $20 for 200 of them. So they were really cheap. So after that, I just head over to my local post office and send it off. So something that I really like about Facebook Marketplace is that as soon as you uh, kind of what's called accept the order by printing out the shipping label, it automatically marks that package as shipped. It notifies the buyer and sends the buyer their a tracking label. So everything that you ship through Marketplace does have a tracking number attached to it, which is really helpful. When I actually drop something off at the post office, um, I will kind of just send the buyer a message to say, hey, just dropped it off, uh, should be heading towards you soon. Something very short and simple. So at this point, it is kind of in the hands of USPS. You have um, sent it off. There's really not much more that you can do. Um, I do like to go back sometimes and just go onto my Facebook seller page and just make sure that everything seems to be moving along. Uh, but generally, everything kind of takes care of itself from here. The way that Facebook Marketplace works is that five days after your item was delivered to the buyer is when Facebook will initiate the payment for your item. So for me, um, I get direct deposits into my bank account, but I think Facebook actually just set up their PayPal option. So you can also get paid through PayPal if you're interested in that. Yeah, but I just get paid through direct deposit and I haven't had a problem with that. 
So, and just keep in mind, if you do start selling a lot of items on Facebook, sometimes they will ask for your social and tax information if you start nearing your state's uh, limit. Um, at the end of the year, I think if you've sold over, at least for Texas, it's $600. Um, I believe they will issue you a 1099, but I am not an expert about the tax side. So ask your CPA those questions, not me. And with that, that is my process from start to finish. Uh, I've been filming for a long time. It is getting dark outside. Mr. Bean is fast asleep on my arm here yeah so with that uh thanks for watching this video um i hoped you were able to learn something i hope this is something that you enjoy doing um be sure to check out some of my other videos on my channel here and i will see you next time <laughs>